It's another hour of golf today on a Monday, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, Damon Hack alongside Eamon Lynch, Golf Week Magazine. We've got golf going on all over the world. Tours back in action. It's a fun, fun time of the year. But right now, I want to focus a little bit on the LPG. I want to look back at some of the marquee events that took place during last year's LPGA season 2023. I tell you, it was a lot to take in. How about Lilia Vu? Do you remember year's first major aim in Chevron? I mean, this is Carlton Woods, UCLA's own Lilia Vu, captured her first major title with later win her second major at the AIG Women's Open. You want to talk about a command performance. And then talking about command performances in June, and our first start is professional. Ro Zhang won her first LPGA Tour title at the Mizuho Americas Open just across the river from Manhattan at Liberty National Golf Club. One shot 82 at Liberty. Very next month at Pebble Beach, Allison Corpuz broke out in a major way, winning the U.S. Women's Open by three shots, one of the most historic golf courses in the world. And later that month, there was a picture-perfect homecoming for Celine Boutier, who won her first major title at the Monday Evian Championship in her home country of France. And it wasn't close at all. She won by six strokes. How about the fall? Perhaps one of the most exciting Solheim Cups in competition History, yeah, Celine was there was in front of a raucous Spanish crowd. Team USA, Team Europe found themselves in a 14-14 tie after it was all said and done because Europe had won the previous cup. Europe officially retained the cup in 2023. And then at the season finale, veteran Amy Yang con conquered Tiburon Golf Club, winning her fifth LPGA Tour title at the CME Group Tour Championship. Took home a check for $2 million. Very, very nice. How about the 2024 season kicks off this week? Lake Nona Ooh. Golf and Country Club in Orlando, Florida. Former home, Hilton Grand Vacations Tournament of Champions. Now, remember, for this event, tour winners from the last couple of seasons pair up with, you know, big-time sports or entertainment celebrities. First round coverage begins 1 p.m. Eastern on Thursday. And here is an overview of that schedule for 2024. 35 events. The tour will make a stop in 15 different states, 10 different countries. Really is a global tour now. 118 plus million dollars, the highest in tour history. And 16 of those tournaments will have purses of at least $3 million. So to preview this season, we want to bring together two of the people who spend more time covering the LPGA Tour than pretty much anybody else out there. Our own Paige McKenzie and major champion Karen Stupples. Karen, I want to start with you on this Roseanne. She was such a story for so long in, in 2023. There was so much anticipation of what she would accomplish, and she wins her first start. But she's only had one top 10 in her last 10 starts. Is, is this what you expected, a kind of a, a period of adjustment as she realizes how tough the pro-life actually is? I think she even says as much herself. I mean, I've had a number of conversations with her about that very same thing. And I think that the biggest shock to her system was the amount of travel that the LPGA Tour has, you know, getting from point A to point B, the amount of work that goes into it. There's no, you know, having a week off, going back to class, living a normal life. You're literally moving on to the next tournament site uh, with the circus that is the LPGA Tour. There's very little respite. And for her, she's super accommodating too when it comes to media, interviews uh, with her fans as well. So she's taken a lot on board um, in a very short space of time, thrown into the Solheim Cup as well. And I think it's been a very quick adjustment for her, you know, into the life of a tour pro. And I, I think that she's had a good bit of time off now. And I think she'll know this coming year what's, what's ahead for her. Thrown into the Solheim Cup page and thrown on the cover of Golf Digest magazine in the October, November issue a wonderful article on the potential of this player and the talent she already has Paige can she be the face of this tour in terms of her marketability the tour always looking across sports name your sport looking for superstars I, I think she could bring in a mainstream audience because I think her story is compelling uh, she was a prodigy played incredible amateur golf is a well-known name amongst the golf community so certainly there, there's a potential that she could uh, continue to stretch the circle greater for women's golf. Um, but I just want to piggyback also off of what Karen was saying about her travel schedule and being hard on maybe her most recent results. But she played 14 LPGA events, 15 worldwide. And of those 15 events, it took place in eight different countries plus Hong Kong. 
So she wasn't just traveling week in and week out. She was traveling all over the world in that May to November stretch. Uh, so I'm looking at Rose for potentially, yes, she got her feet wet, will be under her getting ready for this 2024 season. Uh, I don't know if she has the kind of appeal in her golf game. Uh, with She doesn't have that overwhelming strength and power, which you typically look at for a dominant figure, somebody that's really popular, does something that other people can't do. Rosang makes just golf look easy because she does it well, um, but not in a superhuman way. Paige, two other people who made golf look easy last year are Lilia Vu and Ronin Yin. They're combined to win three major titles. What do you think is a reasonable expectation for them for 24? Because there's got to be a, a certain weight of expectation upon them. And how do you follow a season like that? Well, I'll start with Lilia Vu because I think she was incredibly impressive come the second half of the season. Uh, went through a period, a down period after winning Chevron <coughs> and found her way. Uh, played with incredible confidence at AIG to cap off that second major title and then didn't stop there by picking up another one at the end of the season. Uh, I, I was impressed with how she performed and, and the, the level of poise going through that transition to become a number one player in the world, to be in the spotlight week in and week out. Uh, she seemed to handle it very well, even after that a little bit bump in the road. Uh, I always look at how people respond to tough moments and the way that she responded to, f to finish her year tells me that she's likely gonna be here to stay uh, for quite some time. Ronin Yin, I think, is one of the most exciting players to watch on the LPGA Tour. It was fun to watch her win that major championship. She's got a youthful exuberance. She reminds me of a young Yanni Sen the way that she plays the game, and I say that intentionally, she plays the game. It doesn't feel uh, strategic. It doesn't feel technical. It doesn't feel manufactured. It feels like she plays golf. And for me, uh, as a fan of the game, I love to watch that. Karen, a lot of uncertainty in the men's game, what the future of pro golf will look like. Is there an opportunity for the LPGA to tell better stories, to elevate their players when you consider the elevated purses and the wonderful venues that the women are competing on these days? I think that's a, that's a really broad subject, and I'm sure that the producers are going to get mad if I go into this really in depth. But um, in, in all honesty, yes, the, the, the venues make a big difference because they, they have a, a, a historical value to them where the players can test their game against shots that people have already seen the men play. So I think that that's important. Uh, the purse is increasing. That is also important because that adds perceived value to women's golf. If, if, if they're playing for a big purse, uh, the people casually tuning say, well, this actually matters. The, the, cor the corporations that are sponsoring these players and these tournaments uh, see value in, in, in what they're watching. Therefore, I'm going to have value in what I'm watching too. And I think... Uh, that is all a really good thing. And with regards, you know, trying to capitalise on uh, the PGA Tour, um, I think there is definitely a little window of opportunity opening up there. I think uh, the LPGA Tour is a very pure product right now. It's not really seen through the same eyes as, as men's golf is at the moment in terms of, you know, you have Live and you have the PGA Tour and there's this big fight going on between the two and are they going to come to an agreement or are they not? The LPGA doesn't have that. And I think almost the fact that they have that kind of are they going to come to an arrangement has kind of taken the heat off the LPGA Tour a little bit. It's given the LPGA a little bit of time to breathe, to find their feet and to move forward in, an, in, a, in a really good, clean way. Paige, following on that, I'm curious if you see opportunity here because we, t we hear a lot about sponsors who might not stay with the PGA Tour because the value proposition doesn't work as well anymore. They're being asked to put in a lot more money for the same product. Is there an opportunity for the LPGA Tour to say, here, we're here, we are a value proposition? Without question. Uh, however, one of the, the lessons that I learned as a, as a tour member was understand <laughs> the motivation of the sponsor. And a lot of times the PGA Tour sponsors and the LPGA Tour sponsors do not align in their same motivation. LPGA Tour <coughs> sponsors typically, uh, or LPGA tournaments typically are played in smaller markets. They have more of a community atmosphere where they're creating a better quality of life for potentially, uh, I'm thinking of Dow, for example. Their home base is a small community. They want to have an activity, an, an environment that their uh, employees can be in part of. Things like that 
uh, motivate a company like Dow, a, a PGA Tour sponsor may look for more television eyeballs. They want a, a greater audience in the United States, whereas the LPGA maybe has a greater uh, Asian television audience. So that's why LPGA sponsors get involved. So certainly, I think the opportunity is there. Why would you not go after PGA Tour sponsors that are leaving the PGA Tour uh, if they want to stay in the game of golf, if they want to stay in sports marketing? Then it makes a lot of sense. But do know that a lot of times the venues and the way that these sponsors are tr what they're trying to get out of their endorsement or sponsorship uh, might be different. Certainly, a complex series of decisions that are made here. Mm -hmm. Karen, before we go, I wanted to ask you mm -hmm. one question: Who is trending under the radar here for 2024? <laughs> who, who are you expecting a breakout year from, and why is it Gabby Ruffles? <laughs> well, honestly, I mean, it's, it's just a play. I mean, she's got to be one of the favourites to come out and make a really big splash this year with the three Epson Tour wins. It's not only is she mentally tough, given the fact that she uh, missed getting her LPJ car because she really forgot to put in her application and had to go play on that Epson Tour, but winning three times, proving to herself that she has the ability to do it. I think she has the whole package, both the mental toughness side of it and also the, the talent physically to to really compete on the LPGA Tour. I can't wait to watch her play. Same. Looking forward to the coverage this week from Orlando. Stops, Paige, great to see you. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Sounds good, guys. Thanks.